This is the big moment. I wanted to welcome you to my countdown of my top 10 pens of 2017. Uh, now these are pens, my, I, have a, I have notes here, but basically what my rules are, I have to have filmed a review. Uh, I'm only allowed to put five cards because of how YouTube is set up into my videos. So instead of doing cards, I will put in the description below a link to my review of every one of these pens. Uh, any cards you see up here will be informational. Um, for, for example, I will put a card up here, should be appearing right now, about the links you to my last year's top 10. So I have to have filmed a review. Uh, I tried to cover every price point that I have reviewed. Um, I, it, when possible, I wanted to include some options, although with the vintage, that's a different animal. Uh, I wanted to tell you why it's included and not only am I doing top 10 pens, I'm doing top 5 vintage, just because I don't have as many vintage reviews. And I wanted to also include a top 5 aspirational pens, and I'll cover that when I get to that part of the video. So let's get started. So I'm going to start at the low end here. I have all my pens, you can't see them, but I have a little tray to the side here with all the pens laying in it. Uh, my number one pen at the low end is the Platinum Preppy. I include the Platinum Preppy because this is, well, at the low end, it is an incredibly versatile, very high quality pen. Now, I, t I considered the idea of doing the Jinhao 992, uh, which I gave away a bunch of them to my students, but in the end, I opted for the Platinum Preppy, and I'll show you some of the reasons why. First of all, low cost. This is a magnificent, magnificent seal. Uh, I have left these inked for months with difficult inks and it's, it's still able to write. The nib and feed are removable and then I can put in uh, felt tips of two different sizes, roller balls, a uh, different size nib. So a lot of options there. You can also, this pen isn't set up for it, but put a little rubber o-ring there and put some silicone grease here and you have an eyedropper. In fact, that's what I use every day is eyedropper preppies at school. Um, and the barrel's perfect for eyedroppering. You can do a cartridge. Now, admittedly, this is Platinum's proprietary cartridge, which isn't quite the same as other cartridges. So that is a drawback to the preppy. Uh, you can even use Platinum's converter, although I wouldn't recommend it because you end up wasting a lot of ink that pools here in this strange gap. So uh, I'd stick with that. Um, it does have, you know, kind of garish advertising on it if that's not your thing. But this is definitely my number one low cost pen. Now the time comes when you're ready to move up a level. Uh, and. And I want to recommend a pen that's reliable. In fact, all of these are reliable. I don't want any toy pens or any of these, you know, precious pens that have to be babied. So my next pen is very reliable. Pilot Metropolitan. Now this comes in several finishes. I happen to have the orange pop finish. Uh, you can find some plain ones. You can find different colors. Uh, what they have in common is a metal body at low cost, um, snap cap, and it's a pretty decent snap, reliable nib in several sizes, including some calligraphy options. This happens to be a fine. Unscrew it. Mine came with a, a squeeze converter, an Aerometric, which I upgraded to this. My understanding is now they actually come with a screw converter like this, but it's the updated version. Then instead of this piece of metal inside has uh, some little plastic beads. But very reliable and if you're into that kind of thing, although it takes a little muscle, you can remove the nib and feed and then put in, oops, too far. Well, let's try this. You can remove the nib and feed and then put in something else if you prefer. Uh, these are also interchangeable with some of the Lingmo pens. So uh, yeah. Uh, it's a good pen. I don't ink it up very often, mostly because I have other pens I like better. But since I'm trying to go at all levels, this is a good pen. 
other options to consider similar to this, like I said, would be the Lingmo Lorelei pens, Lorelei, sorry, Lorelei pens, uh, possibly, I'm trying to think, the uh, Pilot Kakuno, which is more of a pocket pen, uh, and perhaps the Pilot Prayer is actually this pen, but with a plastic body, but quite a bit more expensive unless you happen to find it on sale. Pilot Plumix is another one. That, that tends to come with calligraphy nibs. So several good options at this price point. Now jumping up, I wasn't sure exactly where to put this one. This is a Noodler's Conrad. This is a more expensive Noodler's Conrad. You can also purchase them in a uh, more low cost resin finish. There's a acrylic finish also. This is an ebonite. Uh, I put this one here for several reasons. So let's take a look at the pen. First of all, screw cap, variety of finishes, nice generous ink window, piston filler behind the blind cap, which is a feature you don't often find on pens at this price point. You know, Wing Sung has come out with several pens that are piston fillers, but they're not hidden behind a blind cap. Um, flex nib, also very uncommon at this price point. Um, and what's kind of fun, oh, Ebonite Feed. Now what's kind of fun about this, and one of the reasons it's here, this is a pen I can take apart. Uh, I won't disassemble it here, but maybe I should do a video where I do that. Uh, but what I will say is you get to learn how a pen works. Uh, you get to see what, how the feed works. Uh, you can replace the nib. You can heat set the feed to a different nib. Uh, you can take apart the piston. You can put new rubber O-rings on it. So just a lot of great options with this pen. And if you like the different finishes, there are a lot of finishes available on this pen. Ebonite, acrylic, and then the uh, resin. Now the resin version is a little smaller and uh, a little different, but mechanically it's the same pen. Now kind of at the, and it's also about $20 cheaper. Kind of at the same price point. Now I have a special edition Lamy Safari. Let me straighten this out here. My special edition is in the coral color. Uh, you've also seen with some of the Chinese manufacturers some knockoffs of this pen. Uh, Lamy Safari is here because it's low cost, it's reliable, it's reasonably attractive, it's rugged. Uh, and let's look at some of its features. So the clip I don't particularly care for, but it is what it is. Snap cap, and it's a decent snap. It's not one of those mushy snaps. Posts okay. I have replaced the nib, and that's part of the fun of this pen, is you can put different nibs on them. They sell all the way up to 1.9 millimeter nibs if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could even put a gold nib on it, although I don't know why you would. Uh, one thing some people don't like is this triangular grip. I don't mind it. Unscrew it. It is a cartridge converter pen. And I have put the converter in wrong as it turns out. Uh, it, it snaps so it's in, it'll snap in so it's in the right orientation. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Oh, one of the things a lot of the uh, knockoffs get wrong is this ink window here. You can actually see the ink level. A lot of the knockoffs you can't see very much of the ink because it's covered by piston mechanism or hardware inside the pen. So that's one thing that Lamy gets right. Uh, like I said, quality feel. Every year they come out in new colors. This, this as I said, was a special edition of the Coral. Um, I won't list all the colors, but the Lamy Petrol, as I filmed this, was an exciting one of last year. Now, I felt the need for only one. There, if uh, you really like this pen, there are several options out there. Um, maybe more upmarket if you prefer. There's the Lamy LX, which I guess the LX means luxury. I don't, I don't know a lot about the Lamy LX, but it, you know, it's basically a Lamy All Star, which is the aluminum version of this pen, a little more expensive, uh, a little classier looking, a little bit nicer colors. The LX has very classy looking colors. Want to go up a little bit more up market? You have your Lamy Studio, which uh, can even be had with a gold nib. Uh, I have not gone up further than that, 
but the Lamy Dialogue 3 has the same nib as this pen, but in gold. Uh, you can find the Lamy Emporium with the same nib, but in gold. So uh, a lot of options, and they're, and they're getting a lot of mileage out of this one nib design. Now I am curious to see what happens with the Lamy Ion, a new model that's come out this year. I have not purchased one yet. I'm kind of waiting to see, you know, let, I don't like to be a first adopter usually, so let other reviewers work it out. Let Lamy work out some of its bugs and so on. But, you know, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot to be said for this. Um, I think at this same price point, you could look at a Twisby 580 if you would prefer a piston, convert, piston pen. Uh, you could look at some of the Wing Sung models that have built-in pistons. There are other options. I like this one because it's rugged and it's proven itself over time to me. Uh, now, I'm not going to take much of a jump here in price. But my next pen, we probably don't need all this screen real estate, is the humble Caveco Sport. Now, you're going to be seeing a video from me that, of another Caveco Sport that's not going to get such a high rating. I kind of forgot that I'd reviewed it once already. So I did a review of a Caveco Skyline Sport, and I said some unkind things about hard starts and skipping and so on. That said, with the finer nibs, awesome. This pen is, ink. you can tell, because the gold is kind of worn on the clip. This pen is in my pocket all the time in the summer. Especially because I'm usually not wearing shirts with a pocket like this. And by the way, there is usually a pen in this pocket. The reason it's not is it's in my top 10 list. Uh, but this pen... It does not come with a converter. It's meant it's sold as a cartridge pen. Oddly, it does not come with a clip either. That's an add-on. And there's a modern version that's more streamlined, and then there's this more old-fashioned style clip. Uh, the nib and feed. You know, it's just a stainless steel nib. They get a lot of mileage out of this too, just like the uh, Lamy. Some people have eyedroppered this. I prefer not to with a pocket pen, but to eyedropper probably just smear some silicone grease here now this converter is a caveco converter when i bought the pen you couldn't get these little plunge converters for the sport uh, they were only all you could get was this awful 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 aerometric converter so this has been a wonderful thing uh, could use cartridges but i prefer not to now that said you can purchase, there's a number of colors, including demonstrator versions. Uh, there are several finishes. There's a, you know, some that have carbon fiber on them. I happen to own a metal stone washed one, which I like. Uh, the thing with the metal stone washed is that converter I just showed you does not work. So you, ha you, and you can't eyedropper either because it's metal. Uh, so you're stuck using you know, the aerometric converter or a cartridge, which I'm not so much a fan of. But yeah, a lot of variety in this model. If you wanted to get smaller, there's the Caveco Lilliput, which has several interesting finishes. Uh, just a lot of good pens. And I would suggest, from my experience with Caveco, stick with the finer nibs. Fine and medium, I don't seem to have trouble with. Broad and double broad, I do. The next pen on my list, oops, excuse me, is, you may have seen this one coming, my first one that I've shown you that has a gold nib. This is a Platinum 3776. Uh, if you buy the more uh, plain ones like this or the black one, uh, you, you can get them for a relatively low cost for a gold nib pen, pen. There's quite a wide variety of nibs available. In fact, I own a number of Platinum 3776s with uh, a number of different nib sizes and finishes. And yes, there's a lot of fun finishes. They also, every year, seem to come out with special edition finishes. Um, they were originally themed around the lakes around Mount Fuji. Uh, they've had to branch out a little bit because they've run out of lakes around Mount Fuji. But they are still coming out with interesting finishes. They uh, do kind of some neat design things or neat colors. Some of them, there's a little nut up here. They, they've replaced that nut with uh, one that looks like Mount Fuji. There are even uh, celluloid versions. I have one in the koi finish, which is a type of fish. And very attractive. Uh, they all have very nice nibs. There are even some soft nibs. This pen, for example, is a soft fine. 
and uh, there we go. So soft fine, you can see the SF. Now don't expect flex, but definitely some line variation. Uh, and you can pull nibs in and out and replace them if you choose. Uh, it is, to some people's distress, a cartridge converter pen, and it does use a proprietary cartridge slash converter with a bit wider opening than your typical pen, although they do sell an adapter to match it with the standard international. Uh, I've been pretty happy with these converters. Uh, I like this pen because I can very quickly clean it out too. Now one other selling point that's not available in the celluloid finish, and you can't see it, I probably should have grabbed a demonstrator, but too late now. Uh, inside here there is a mechanism called a slip and seal mechanism, which as I cap, yeah, you can't see it, but as I cap it, it actually supposedly will provide a seal and keep the ink from drying out for over a year. I haven't tested it for a year. I've tested it for a month or two, and it, it works. It starts right up. So that's an innovative feature I really appreciate. And uh, like I said, in the really expensive versions, don't look for that because it's not there. But in the cheaper versions, there it is. Now this next pen is a pen that I use daily and is normally resting right here. Lamy 2000. Uh, Lamy 2000 is a very reliable daily writer. Uh, this also has a gold nib which is plated in I believe platinum. Uh, the finish on it is Macrolon which is a type of fiberglass resin thing that is actually been used in riot shields and the like so it's a very strong pen as you can see it is very well machined uh, aluminum clip back here piston turning knob normally hidden snap cap one thing some people don't like although they don't bother me are the ears that hold the cap on i honestly don't feel them um, the section is i believe that's aluminum but it's textured so it doesn't bother me. Semi-hooded nib. Don't expect, you know, flex or anything, but do expect some line variation. This is not a perfectly spherical point on the nib. And, and you see it more as you go to the larger nib sizes. I have a broad that definitely you see it's almost like a stub. And then on the barrel there is, a, you can't see it because it's full of ink. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There is an ink window. Not great for looking in the pen, but it gives you a good clear view of whether it's out of ink or not, or close to running out of ink. Uh, very functional design. It's part of that Bauhaus school of thought. And uh, it, it, when you look at Lamy pens, you don't see fancy. You might see, you know, groovy colors and stuff like you saw, but you don't don't expect a fancy pen. Do expect sturdy, reliable, well-machined pens. And that's why there are two Lamy's on this list. Uh, this next pen is uh, new to this list. I don't. I think all of the others were on the list last year. This one is new. This is a Waterman Karen. Uh, I purchased this pen this year. I bought a used one. It's a gold nib pen. Let's put it down so you can take a look at it. And comes in several finishes. You know, the price goes up as you get different finishes. This is a lower cost finish. There, we'll shade it a little so you can kind of appreciate it. This one doesn't look so great under the bright lights that I use. <laughs> but it, it is a, uh, this is the amber marine finish. These are metal pens. You can get the classic blue finish. There's a quilted metal finish that uh, some of the reviewers liked. Um. The Koran is supposed to be have to do with the hull of a ship, so I guess it does the profile of a ship. I don't know. Now, uh, snap cap pen. And yes, nice clickiness. This is, alone on this list, an inlaid nib, which means it's actually part of the section, which gives you a pretty wide variety of places to grip. Now, I bought mine in a medium. You'll find the medium and the fine are the easiest to find, although there are other sizes available. You just have to hunt for them. If I unscrew the barrel, it is a cartridge converter pen, and there is no hope of eyedroppering. Uh, I liked 
all the pictures I saw, you know, this end bit lines up with the nib. The finial, that's the word I'm looking for. Only the one I bought, this one, it did not. So I had to do some adjusting, which you can watch the review. In here, there's a nut and such that I have to unscrew and turn and then experiment. It took quite a while to get it lined up perfect. And it might be a degree or two off, but I'm not, you know, fig boot on pens would probably be bothered that it's a degree or two off. I'm not. It's close enough. And when I'm writing with it, I don't even notice anyway. So, uh, but a nice wet writer. I often have a Noodler's Antietam in here. It's just, you know, a luxury daily writer. I got the medium. If it was a fine, you know, I prefer the Lamy 2000 as a daily writer, but I would not mind this one as a daily writer. Now we'll jump up on my list. This pen was paid for entirely by this channel. This is the Platinum President. So when you see those advertisements before the channel, you know, I don't do Patreon. I don't like doing that. Uh, but I don't mind running the advertising as long as it stays unobtrusive. And I know some people don't like it, but this pen was paid for, and actually so was the tripod that's holding up the camera that you're looking at the camera with a pen with, was paid for entirely through advertising dollars through this channel. This is a Platinum President. This could be another Daily Raider pen. Uh, I like it. I bought it with a broad nib and then I had it ground to a cursive italic by Dan uh, Dan Smith, the nib smith. And it's just such a good writer and so much fun to write with. A little bit thicker section Definitely a higher quality plastic than the 3776. Same converter. But, you know, some people don't like converters. I, I actually don't mind them because it makes the pen easy to clean out. Uh, I'll have to do a video on that one of these days. 18 karat nib. So don't expect a lot of flex. They don't have as many... At least here in the United States, they don't have as many nib choices as they do with the 3776, but it is a very good pen, and I've and it's wet, just a very good writer. And you can see some quality, you know, this is more of an understated luxury than some other pens might be. Now, taking the top of this list was a pen I originally bought to be my daily writer. Uh, I found I prefer the Lamy 2000, but now kind of what I do is I alternate between them. One gets used in the summer, one gets used in the winter. Uh, this one I don't like taking the, out in public as much. This is the Pilot Custom 823. Now last year I had the Pilot, uh, Pilot Justice 95 in this place, but I changed my mind and decided to go with this pen this year because, yes, the Pilot Justice is more... Uh, adjustable and flexible this pen is a daily writer with a large ink capacity so screw cap you can purchase there's only three nib sizes medium fine and abroad i have the fine because it was meant to be a daily writer uh, you can exchange it with any number 15 pilot nib. So, you know, you could put a FA nib on it, for example, if you wanted a lot of flex. It just, I'm not going to do it, but it just pulls out. It is a vacuumatic, or not vacuumatic, it's a vacuum filler, which means as you write, this has to be open to move this piston, here I'll animate, move this piston up. Otherwise, once the ink is out of, I mean, the feed is out of ink, you're done writing. Uh, otherwise, you pull the that out, stick the, and yes, I, you can see it wasn't cleaned out perfectly. I will probably re-ink it soon. But anyway, you stick it in the ink, push this down, it creates a vacuum behind it, and then it enters a wider part, which causes the ink to be pushed into about here. If you would like a full fill, then what you do is you turn it upside down, pull this out again, push this up until the ink is just barely starting to ooze around the feed. Stick it in your ink, push it the rest of the way down, and boom, you have a full fill. 
Uh, maybe this pen isn't for everybody, but I love it. Um, like I said, I decided it's a little too nice just for daily use at work. You know, I'm a teacher. <laughs> so uh, this stays at home. And in the summer when I take classes and travel or just write at home for daily writing purposes, this is what I use. So very nice pen. So starting at the low cost end, Platinum Preppy, Pilot Metropolitan, Noodler's Conrad, Lamy Safari, Caveco Sport, Platinum 3776, Lamy 2000, Waterman Karen, Platinum President, and a Pilot Custom 823. And now what I'd give you a little more view there. Now what I would like to do is I'd like to turn my attention to the vintage top five. And again, same rules has to be one I've used before. I tried to give the gamut. Now, uh, price wasn't as big a consideration here because there's a lot more variables with that. Now, some of these are pens I restored and got for free. Others I purchased already restored. So there's too many variables to use cost. So I just did, what are my five favorites? So starting out, on the, and this is in no order at all. Uh, it's just the order I grabbed them and laid them in the tray. So my first pen I want to show you is a Caveco. Now this is from the 1960s. And I may have mentioned before, there's a certain aesthetic I like. I like slim black pens of the 1950s and 60s. There it is. With an extra bit because it has a shiny cap. Very plain, very functional. This is a Caveco V14S. It is a piston filler, which Cavecos no longer are. It's made out of that same precious resin that a Mont Blanc 149 would be made out of. Uh, it's supposed to be scratch resistant because it's extra hard. Uh, you can see some condensation because the basement is cold and my hands are warm. And this has been, I've been in the basement for a while. Uh, the, it is a screw cap. Shows a, an okay ink window. It's not, you know, one of the best. Blue. You know, so you're not admiring the color of the ink, but it's kind of a neat look. Uh, is that a semi-hooded or wing nib? I'm drawing a blank there. Uh, this has absolutely no flex to it. It's an extra fine, but I'll tell you what. If I'd owned this pen before I bought the Lamy 2000, I probably never would have thought about buying a Lamy 2000 as a daily writer. This is a nice pen to write with. You know, it's just a low enough flow that it'll work on any kind of paper. So, I, you know, I can correct student work with this pen. It's just wonderful. You know, smooth acting piston. It's just all around a great pen. So if you're wondering why you didn't see me, <laughs> when I did the, the Caveco V14S, I forgot to turn that camera back on because that camera overheats if it runs too long. So I had turned it off while I switched trays and uh, forgot to turn it back on. So sorry about that, but I'm back now. So my next pen... If you're into vintage at all, you have seen this one. This is an Estabrook J. Now, I like the Estabrook model. This one was sent to me by viewer and uh, fellow reviewer Chris Rapp, 52. This is a neat, it's, it's a lever filler. What's really neat about them is they're low cost, and they come with quite a variety of nibs that you can buy. Uh, this one... I don't remember which nib this is. Oh, this is one of the flexible nibs. 9048. And they're easy to replace because you just unscrew them, put a different nib in. Uh, what's kind of fun about an Estabrook is they're very easy to repair and it's very easy to find parts. I mean, this, this section just slips out. You can put a new sack in it, a new J-bar. In fact, this one... Um, Chris Rapp thought he'd sent me a good one, but actually the J-bar was broken, so that was my first experience with vintage pen repair. I'd owned a few, but they were in good shape, so I got to replace the J-bar in this. So this is a good one if you're just looking to get into vintage pens. And it comes in a variety of finishes. Uh, I have one pen that, like this that's actually was given apparently as a gift to workers at the company of... Um, well, Edison Company, but pretty sure not Edison Pens. Um, and there's a medium-sized version, a small size. 
Now this is a standard size pen. Now with my growing interest in vintage pens, I started seeking out the more exotic, and of course I like those slim black plain pens from Europe. Uh, and a viewer contacted me and was interested in doing a trade. Now, I still feel like I got the better end of the deal. I won't tell you what, what was traded, but what I got was a Norwegian fountain pen. I would never knew that Norway made fountain pens. This is a Norwegian Pond 52. And if you watched a recent Pens in Use, you probably also saw I just reviewed a Pond Senior because I just restored it. This pen doesn't look like much. It's actually sort of brownish, but it's hard to tell in this light. Um, screw cap. Very plain. It's a button filler. Which my Pond Senior also seems to be a button filler. Uh, comfortable grip. What's kind of fun, a very flexible gold nib. And this was an ordinary person's pen. Um, and I, di I did a whole history of Pawn when I did my review of this pen. But I just love that it's so understated and yet such an amazing writer. And so that's what I would encourage you to do, although I probably shouldn't because I want them for myself, is to get out there and look for those more uncommon pens. You get some wonderful, wonderful surprises. I have a Dutch Cora that I need to review one of these days. Uh, I shouldn't say Dutch. I should say a Cora from the Netherlands. There, that's better. For reasons, if you study the Netherlands, you'll know why I corrected myself there. But anyway, it's a Cora from the 1950s. It's just an amazing nib. Doesn't look like much, but wow. So I would encourage you to look at some of these more uncommon manufacturers. You'll get some surprises. In fact, my final pen that I'll be showing you is one of those surprises. Now I'm going to change gears here, show you a more well-known pen. The Aurora 88. This has been a wonderful, wonderful discovery. Uh, and it seems to be a little long here, so let's back up. I love those slim black vintage pens. I looked a little bit, you know, at the Parker 51. I own one. You know, it's it's a nice enough pen. This thing beats it hands down. I just love, love, love this pen. Uh, feels good in the hand. Uh, it is an excellent, excellent daily writer. It just, they got a lot of things right. And I think it has a better filling mechanism than the 51. Um, so slip cap. Less complex fittings than the 51. Uh, Semi-hooded rather than hooded nib, which gives you two things. One, uh, it gives you the possibility of having a flex nib here. Now, this particular one is not terrifically flexible. My other one is, and yes, I do own two of these. Uh, I like, I appreciate the ink window. I have seen ink windows in this color, and I've also seen them kind of reddish. Uh, the piston, yeah, that's a thing I like. Now check this out. As I screw down the piston, yeah, we're not coming out at all. So it's an interesting mechanism. Uh, just all around such a nice pen. And, you know, they, the older ones actually came with a serial number, so you can sort of approximate their age. This is a Nick Argenta finish. There were several finishes available. And then they modernized and got into some other finishes and you know did some updates to the design. But what a classic, classic design. And what an amazing pen. Um, this is a celluloid here and then with ebonite for the turning knob and the grip section. And of course, presumably an ebonite feed. Which, by the way, the grip section does unscrew for the pen, making for easy cleaning. Now, if you've been a viewer of my channel for any length of time, you know what pen is coming next. Ta-da! This is not one of my slim black pens. It's European. This is, and I got in trouble with a viewer for this, but, uh, I'm right. This is a Czechoslovakian pen. It's made by a company called Centro Pen. And this viewer said, there is no Czechoslovakia. Learn your history. And I'm just like, yeah, you're right. There is no Czechoslovakia. 
But back in the 1960s, when this pen was made, there was. So Czechoslovakian, this, I'm told this is a celluloid. Now this is no Arco celluloid like you see on the Omas pens. But let's see if I can get you a good look at that. But oh my God, that's gorgeous. And yes, condensation because it's flipping cold in this basement. But gorgeous, gorgeous celluloid. Um, this has gold filled fixtures. It has what is probably the most flexible nib of any pen I own. It's just amazing. It's almost like writing with a paintbrush. Now you do have to keep it lined up. You know, th this isn't the pen that's forgiving if you're at different angles. And it took me a lot of practice to really get good at this nib. But what a stunning, amazing nib. And of course, presumably an ebonite feed. Nice large ink window, apparently all full of condensation. And then a blind cap, which isn't perfectly aligned to show a piston, piston turning knob. Uh, some might complain that the finish is not lined up exactly, and to which I would say, yeah, you're right. Uh, but you have to remember what this is, a communist era pen of the 1960s. To get something like this, from the 1960s and you know it's close it's just unbelievable this is a truly incredible pen and it came with a a companion pencil in the same finish uh, i don't like mechanical pencils so i never use it but what an amazing pen what an amazing piece of history um i don't know if there's anything comparable right now you know, finishes, yes, there are pens with nicer finishes. I've met pens with nicer nibs. Uh, I don't own any of them, but they're out there. But I've never met a pen that has all of this in one package. This is, this is the jewel of my collection. And actually, perhaps that's a good point to come to my final bit of this video that I'm doing new this year. And I can't show you anything yet. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to just mention, uh, you know, some aspirational pens. Uh, does this mean I will be buying these in the next year? No, <laughs> I can't buy this list in the next year. Now, I'm using the word aspirational pens. Some people use the word grail pens. To me, a grail is like the holy grail. It's unattainable. Or it's only attained at great cost in too many parts of your life. Uh, an aspirational pen is a fancy way of saying, pen I want but can't afford, <laughs> um, unless I save. Um, so the first one I have here is a Conid Bulkfeller Minimalistica. Uh, that, and I actually want a titanium nib on that with possibly a backup steel fine nib. That pen, the biggest reason I want it is the, the cool filling me mechanism, and it just totally embraces being a transparent demonstrator. And the titanium nib, I've watched some videos on that, just kind of neat nib. Uh, another one would be a Pelican M800. Um, that one's a little lower on my list. I really liked some of the special edition finishes. I liked the orange one when that came out. I liked the Renaissance Brown, which is discontinued. And this year I really like that Ocean Swirl, especially if I could get one where it's the Ocean Swirl on two sides and the black on the other, kind of like baby here. Um... But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I want it. That's a lot of money for a pen. And I'm kind of afraid with that one. I don't know if I like it. Now, I do own a, a Pelican M400. No, is it an M400? It's a 400NN. It's a 1950s pen, anyway. With that same striped green finish. And I like that. That kind of scratched my itch for the striped green finish. So, I don't know. Uh, that's a review I'm filming this weekend, by the way, although you probably won't see it for a while. Uh, an Aurora 88. Uh, I've seen two that I've really liked. I like the Soleil finish, the Sun one. That was just beautiful. Didn't buy it, but I liked it. Uh, and I really like the Flex nib thing. You know, I'm kudos to Aurora for going out on a limb with those nibs. You know, Omas did the same thing too, but Omas, sadly, is no longer with us. And um, I... 
feel like Aurora is not going to follow the same fate. I think they're doing it right. And Aurora has a number of pens at different levels too, which Omas did not have. So I think it'll be interesting to see where this flex experiment goes next with Aurora. But anyway, that's on my list. Uh, and you saw I really love the vintage Aurora 88. Let's see. Now this one is going to sound weirdly specific. Because I've thought about this one a lot. A Nakaya Decapod Twist. Very cool. It's an ebonite pen with, uh, I think, yeah, 10 sizes because Deca. But then they twist the whole thing. And then uh, I would want mine finished with a Heki Tamanuri Iroshi finish, which looks really cool. It's kind of a brown with green showing through it. Uh, I'd want a so soft, fine nib. And uh, if I were to get one, I think I'd want to get... Uh, I don't usually go for engraving pens, but I think I'd get this one engraved with the... I mean, I would use the Chinese characters, but you know, in Japanese they have what's called kanji, which is uh, Chinese characters used for Japanese words, uh, for squirrel, which is songshu, and you know, the characters look kind of cool. I mean, most people who look at it wouldn't know what it means, but right now you can see that I'm using that as my channel avatar. Um, there's several words for squirrel in Japanese, so hopefully that's, the, you know, if I were to do this, I could communicate that clearly. Another pen, which a uh, pen pal keeps mentioning, I, I like the looks of it. I, I don't care for the price, but uh, I like the looks. I like the writing. Is a Wall Eversharp Deco Band. Very cool flex pen. Uh, and another one, some innovation. I'd like to see some innovation in nibs, materials, feeds. Uh, filling mechanisms. Uh, there seems to be a lot of pens where it's, yeah, we've got a cool finish on it, but it's the same nib as this other company. Uh, a Sailor King of Pens. I actually really like the looks of the plain black ebonite one with rhodium trim. Yes, there's an Arushi version. Yes, there's some fancier finishes. I really like that. Again, goes back to my slim black European pen thing. Plain black with rhodium trim. I kind of like the Platinum Izumu with the Akatami Red. Um, thank you, Platinum President, because it's the same nib. Uh, just interested in it. Well, it's attractive. Maybe a few years down the road, I'll look at it. And then, of course, I'll continue to look for my slim black vintage pens and other vintage surprises. So those are my pens in use. Uh, just double-checking the battery here. Oh, yeah, good thing we're closing this off because it's about to die. So I hope that was interesting. Hope you saw something useful. Uh, as you're making pen decisions, you know, look at all of the reviewers, see what people are thinking. Our top tens, most of us are not scientific. We're very subjective with our in impressions of pens. It has a lot to do with hand size, how you hold a pen, how you write, what inks you use, what paper you use. There's a lot of things that go into any pen review, but I find reviews, videos like this interesting. It just gives me things to think about as I look at other pens. So hope that was interesting. Hope that was useful. I wish you a happy 2018. We'll be back next year. Uh, I wrote down to mention this. Uh, I will be continuing to do reviews. Uh, when I'll, I will upload every Wednesday at 3 o'clock Mountain Time. I... Uh, getting a few reviews ahead over this break because, you know, as I got busy toward the end of the semester, that was sort of failing. Uh, pens in use every Friday at 3 o'clock Mountain Time. You know, I film all these ahead of time and then schedule the the, uh, the unveiling, I guess. Uh, driving videos, if I do one, Sunday at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. That's an if. Uh, tours will also be at that time. And uh, a lot of my book review type stuff will probably be then. Or an alternate time would be Monday at some time. I don't know when. Some of my videos that don't fit in, like if I do another note-taking video, or I, I want to do a video on uh, Evernote and OneNote and such. Um, book reviews, something random that just pops up. Monday just seems like a good day for that. Or Sunday if I don't do a driving video. So who knows? So... Thank you for watching. Uh, expect more pen reviews. Expect some comparisons. Expect some paper reviews this year. I've been encouraged to do some of those. Uh, and expect me to continue my voyage down vintage, low-cost pens. 
uh, and high cost pens. You know, just a little bit of everything. I, I enjoy doing the variety of pens. I've got a Bauer 801 I'm going to be filming today. You know, you can't get much cheaper than that. So I just enjoy the variety that's out there. So I thank you for watching. I thank you for making this channel what it is. And I hope to see you back in 2018. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.